Uh, what? What? What's going on? Something's happening. Something's happening at Blues. Yeah, welcome to the video. Um, today we're going to be talking about the new kit which was leaked uh, by We Are Birmingham. Uh, the mock-up of it which looks absolutely incredible. And finally, some transfer news. Solid transfer news that <sighs> looks quite promising as well. It does look quite promising. Before we get into this video guys, I just want to say a big shout out to our sponsors over at OneFootball. Go and check them out. The best football app on the market. Everything you need. For the start of the new season, get it downloaded um, and let me know what you think as well. Um, but without further ado, let's get into this video talking uh, firstly about that beautiful, beautiful kit. Obviously, um, at the time of like this is all at the time of recording. Uh, things could change, but I'm going to try and get this out as fast as possible. Um, if more news comes out, hopefully there are there are some more transfer developments that come out later on. I'll I'll be happy to make another video if you want me to. Um, obviously, I don't just know everything about uh, this new player and about the kit. Obviously, there's a few sources I need to go through and thank as well. So, first of all, for the kit reveal, uh, We Are Birmingham did a mock-up. So, uh, they, they said on Twitter that they received a description of the kit. And then, um, one of the guys at We Are Birmingham, um, who is a graphic designer, mocked up the kit. Um, so, that's what it will look like, pretty much. There might be a couple of things that are different. But, um, as I say, I trust everything that comes out from We Are Birmingham because, like... I know the guys, and I know they don't, they won't put something up if 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 it's not true because their reputation will go with it. In terms of the kit, though, it's exactly well, not exactly, but it's what I wanted. I wanted a black kit. Um, we haven't had one for a few years. I think it was uh, 2012, 2013. We last had one, the black one with the pink trim on it. So as you can see, it's got the pattern. It's a, it's a very subtle pattern, but it's like the same as that germ. I think with the Germany World Cup kit, it's a sort of template, but it's not so obvious. It's very, very smart. And uh, I like I like wearing black anyway. It's slimming. It's very slimming. <laughs> so <laughs> happy days. All right. Um, but yeah, let, like, let me know what you think of the kit as well. It's officially being launched today at 12 p.m. So uh, yeah, an another thing that got leaked. How good would it be if they announced the kit with a new signing? Wearing the kit. Do you think Blues would do that? I don't know, but I hope I hope their, their media team or their marketing team are all over that. Because that would be amazing. And the one player that it could be is a guy called Daniel Crowley. Now, I'm going to talk a bit about Daniel Crowley. Uh, things have literally just surfaced on Twitter. It is half nine on the 16th on Tuesday so I'm gonna just upload this tomorrow morning first thing um, yeah a lot of things are resurfacing now so I'm having a look and from my first impressions right this guy looks the real deal like he looks like the exact type of player we need to be going for again we are Birmingham announced this on Twitter there were a few things going about on Twitter but like, like I say I don't really take much notice of it because there are a lot of names flying around but when we are going to tweet some out i'm like okay yeah it's probably uh it's probably got some legs so, um, we are Birmingham tweeted out saying, We understand that BCFC are currently in advanced talks with Willem for midfielder Dan Crowley. And now, personally, I've not heard of this lad. I've not heard of him. He's 21 years old. He's a central midfielder. F feeler? Feeler? <laughs> central midfielder. Um, young, uh, mate. If it's, a, if it's a permanent deal, this is exactly the type of transfer we need to be going for. Someone that's going to increase in value. And I just hope that's it. I hope it's not a loan deal because, I, you know, as much as a loan deal is fine, I want us to be signing players. Um, so I've no one said on Twitter yet whether it's going to be a loan or a permanent deal. Maybe by the time this video is out, it'll be, it'll be announced. Um, but we'll have to see. Um, hopefully the, the signings announced tomorrow because I need a, I need a player I need a I need some sort of player to sign for Blues that I could just throw in my career mode as soon as possible because I'm getting a bit a bit bored. I've had a look at some of his highlights. I know what you're gonna say, um, but I have looked for like deeper than this. I've looked into reports. Um, so, but but looking at some of his highlights, he seems to like 
be quite a tricky player who likes to float a risky ball into the box. He's not afraid to get the ball in the box. And we know how good Duke is to get, like, get on the end of crosses. So if, if they can like figure each other out, get a little bit of a, not a partnership, you know, the different positions, but if they can get some sort of chemistry together, that could work out pretty well. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go into that a little bit more shortly. So, a journalist called Ashwin Raman uh, wrote an article for Football Index, World Football Index, and it's basically talking about. Um, it, it's like a scout report, so it's got everything that you'd want to know about this player. I'm going to go through it and pick a few bits, but I will also drop the link to this article down in the top comment, in the pinned comment, um, just because it is a really, really good, informative article, and it's exactly what I like to see. It's got a load of stats in there, so it's rather than just looking at some YouTube highlights, you actually get an in-depth feel for the, for the strengths and weaknesses of a player. So... Um, Let's go and have a look at it. So he starts off by saying he was in the Arsenal Academy and he was often compared to Jack Wilshere because both at Arsenal, same sort of stature, same sort of position. Um, and Jack Wilshere actually put a tweet out at one point saying, uh, everybody follow Daniel Crowley 24. Trust me when I say this kid is a player. Big future. That was in 2013. Uh, six years ago. But listen, the guy is 21 years old. That, I, I, that was an oversight for I did not realize he was that young and uh, to get a player that could probably slot into our first team exactly what we need to be going for um, so you know what uh, if we if we bring him in I'm happy I've done a lot of moaning about blues at the minute but you know what if they want to play this attacking football this new philosophy it's good that we're going for the right kind of players for it we do need more we need a lot more but this will be a really good start like in the preseason friendlies in central midfield, we've just not looked. We've not looked great. We need someone who can really, really um, like a playmaker. Someone that's someone that can just make things happen from midfield, link up midfield to attack. That's exactly what we need. And this guy looks like he could be the real deal. But hey, let's not get too excited. I'm getting ahead of. I'm definitely getting ahead of myself. So I'm going to try and rein myself back in. All right. There's a lot of detailed statistics in this article and I'm not going to go through everything because it's a really well written piece and I want you to go and check it out for yourself so do go and check it out using the link in the top comment. Um, but I will touch on a few. They, they, they talk about how effective he is, how high usage he is in his team. Um, they talk a lot about his passing and stuff. So this is this is gonna you're gonna get a lot more out of this article than you are than you would from looking at some YouTube highlights. So they say the first thing you notice about Crowley when he gets the ball is how he gets the ball. His first touch under pressure is excellent, and he usually finds a decent solution to any pressure around him when getting the ball. Uh, and, and in here as well, you're gonna see a few gifts of um, some of his passes, the way he controls the ball, the way he can trick defenders into, into committing uh, so that he can find a bit of space for himself. He seems like a very intelligent player and at just 21 years old, there's a lot of room for growth there, I think. And if we can get this guy on a permanent, I I think he's, he's probably just the player we've been looking for. Yes, he he could flop. Yeah, he could flop, but it's, it's it looks like quite a low risk. It looks like we're going to the right leagues to get these type of players. And I don't know how much we're going to sign him for. It's probably going to be undisclosed. But I think I don't think we're going to overspend for him. We can't, really. Uh, so, so, yeah, this will be a really good opportunity for him to uh, make a name for himself in English football. So this is the top 20 for successful dribbles per 90 minutes in the Eredivisie. He was third with 2.6 successful dribbles per 90 minutes. That is second only to Martin Odegaard and Hakim Ziyech. That's, again, another another quality stat. To be fair, this looks like the type of player that could potentially um, replace Hata. So looking at some of the drawbacks for this player as well, he seems a little bit weak on the ball, but we've had that issue with Hata before, uh, and you're probably going to expect that from his type of player that's playing a sort of advanced midfield role. Uh, yeah, that's probably what you're going to get. Also, as well, what you what you do tend to get with these creative number 10s, working hard for the ball, winning the ball back is not what what they really want to be doing. Um, is Pep the man that's going to be like, you need to be winning the ball back. This is the championship. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. But 
We might get frustrated with him from time to time like we have done with other players. Again, Hutter, for example, was a little bit like that. Um, one of the stats they've used in this article is he wins the ball back a mere 1.5 times per 90, which is low even for attacking midfielders. He just isn't a very hard worker off the ball, apparently. So, yeah, listen, it's not all going to be massively positive. There are there are aspects of his game that he can learn as well. Hopefully, he can get a bit stronger on the ball. Hopefully, he can get a bit uh, of a harder work rate. But sometimes you do have to sacrifice that. Sometimes you're going to have a player that's a little bit more um, passive and... Uh, in a team like Blues, I don't like to see it really because I, I like to see us as a team where everyone's pushing for that ball. Um, you've seen teams like Norwich where every single player is is so is so involved and so it like you need to have everyone pushing, everyone doing the right thing. You can't have anyone just sitting back being a bit lazy. So yeah, we might have frustrations with him. <sighs> I mean, if if he was if he was perfect, if he if he was the perfect centre attacking mid. Uh, we'd probably be paying a lot more for him and he'd probably be at a better club. So that's what we're going to get. Those are the issues we're probably going to have to iron out of him. And again, these type of players that will grow in value, we iron these out and maybe we sell them in the future. But we make a profit. We are a sustainable club. That's where we want to be. We've, we've got to sign more players like this. I'm hoping it gets over the line. I really am. One of the other drawbacks as well is that he's a bit one-footed, uh, so it could be a bit predictable. We've probably seen that with, with Hutter as well. He, he, he's reminding me of Hutter a lot, but you know what? Positives, negatives, whatever. Look at this last paragraph in this article. Crowley is nothing short of a gem, and he wouldn't be prohibitively expensive. There are parts of his game that he could improve in order to reach the next level as a player. But don't be surprised if he turns out for a big five club bordering on Champions League qualifications in the next few years. AKA Birmingham City. So guys, um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of information. I didn't want to give you the whole article because I don't think that's very fair on the person who wrote it. The person that wrote it... His Twitter account is AshwinRaman underscore. Uh, go and drop him a follow if you want to see some more stats. Again, guys, the article is down in the comments if you do want to check it out. There's a load more information on there. Lots, a lot more in depth than what I've said. Uh, so make sure you do check it out. Uh, on a final note, We Are Birmingham have just released their own article out on Crowley. And they've ended it by saying uh, that they believe there are also two more potential deals in the works. And we will endeavour to keep you as up to date as possible on those developments. So again, like a big thank you to them for, for keeping us up to date. And uh, do, do make sure you follow them on, on Twitter if you want to hear some of the latest news. But that's going to be it for today. Um, hopefully, maybe by the time this goes out, he's actually signed. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, that'll be it from me. Make sure you hit the like button if you'd enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on this signing down in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new with notifications on. And I'll see you in the next one. Keep right on.